Michael Owen's son James had high hopes of following in his dad's footsteps, steps, uh, playing for England and having a prestigious football career, but he was stopped in his tracks after being diagnosed with a rare eye condition called Stargardt disease, which has left him clinically blind. In a new father-son documentary, Football is for Everyone, James and Michael explore sight loss in the world of football and speak of the emotional difficulties involved. Let's take a look. Very good morning to you both. Good morning. Um, James, you had a dream like any other kid, particularly any other child of a football legend. <laughs> so how did your sight loss affect your ambition? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone dreams of being a footballer when yeah. they were younger, don't they? So it was, um, it was, it was quite hard, especially for it being so close to home. But um, yeah, it, it's just something you have to get over. It's, it is, it was hard at the time, and I did used to struggle with it for a long time. But we've got an image of, um, you know, for those who don't suffer this condition, to understand what you can see. And I wonder, while we're looking at it, whether you can just explain your. Um, Stargardt's condition? Yeah, well, that is actually quite interesting because I get asked that all the time, mm. like, how much I can see. And to that answer is, I actually don't know. And I see pictures saying that's what I see, but since I was born this way, I don't know what to compare it to. Because I know I've got, like, a few blind spots and mm. apparently I, it, some places are blurry, but I don't know what For any For you, it's normal. Is. <laughs> yeah, it's perfectly so, normal, isn't it? So yeah. I presume that is what I see. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, yeah. That's about That's interesting. it. Michael, listening to you in the documentary there, talking about what it was like before the diagnosis, um, I've um, spent a lot of time with parents of children who stammer, and often it's the dads who spend years saying to their kids, get your words out, get your words out. And when they find out about the diagnosis, they feel terribly guilty about the things that they were saying to their kids before. Yeah. And I, I felt some of that, um, th that pain and guilt for you thinking back on giving James a hard time. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't understand, as I said in the uh, in the clip there. Uh, I couldn't understand why he wasn't looking at the camera straight. Uh, I'd get people come up to me and say, you know, I've just a bit of advice for your son. When he shakes your hand, tell him to look in, mm. look in someone's eye and, and things like that. And you always think to yourself, shall I tell him? No, I'll just, I'll just leave. I can't be bothered having the conversation. Um, so, and, and that happens to this day. Um, but you were thinking then it was his fault. I was, at, at, yeah, back in the day, of course I was. And then especially on the football field where I knew where he should have been standing, what he should have been doing, and he wasn't doing it. And I'm not a pushy parent. I'm not one of those dads that stand on the side of the, 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 the line and, and shout at him. So I would just sort of make these little whistly noises um, to sa and he knew that was something that was sort of wrong when he did that. And he'd, he'd sort of almost go into a bit of a, a, a panic thinking, mm. right, I'm in the wrong position here because my dad's just made a little whistle noise. Um, but anyway, you know, that was, that was then and, and, and this is now. But it's interesting, James, because you've already said it, it wasn't that you thought there was anything wrong, because presumably you thought everybody had the same vision. Yeah, I mean, it's just not something which comes to mind, really. It's just, I, that's just how I was living. I just was carrying on. Um, and, yeah, I, I mean, it's still a bit of a shock. It's just a lot of people don't even, even though they know me, it's not something they think about is me being visually impaired. A lot of the time, it just like they forget about it. But it's yeah, it's it's quite hard to to know. Yes. At some and you went to train, didn't you, with um, the national partially sighted football team? So, and a lot of them in the team do share the same condition. What was it like then to have that experience of talking to them about how they continue playing football? Oh, it was great. I mean. I've never met anyone with an eye condition before then, so um, it was a real, like, I, wouldn't, I don't know whether I should say relief, but it was, um, it was nice to know that there's other people like you and you can be able to connect in some way through that, um, get a bit of weight off your shoulders. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're all very good players mm. and I just want to congratulate all of them. Yeah. Can and you remember that moment when, um, when both of you found out what this condition was, that James was actually suffering something which, which, which was real and that you hadn't known about before. How did you feel? Was that like a shock? Did it feel like, you know, a, a disaster? Or, um, you know, how was it at the time? Well, I, I, don't, I, I suppose as a parent, um, myself and my wife probably felt, you know, far worse than James, I guess, which mm. sounds really bad. You want to take all the pain away from him. You want to, mm. you know, you feel sorry for him every time he goes to hospital and he gets this 
new drops that, that make his eyes sting and he's crying all day and, you know, and he can't see all day because of it because, you know, they need to, to look into the eye a lot better and all these things. But James is born that way. James doesn't, you know, doesn't know any different. Um, so I think it was quite hard for, for us, of course, when we found out that this was an incurable, you know, uh, disease at the moment. Of course, we live in an age now with stem cells and all these things that we go to bed every night praying that, that something's going to uh, be there to cure him. But at the moment, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, um, a condition that regresses over time. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously horrible. But, you know, I've never sang it off the rooftop. So we're not, you know, we get on with life. You know, James is 18 in a couple of, of weeks. We have a fantastic life together. Uh, it actually brings us closer. You know, I have to drive him everywhere. You know, he, obviously he can't drive because he can't... Taxi driver for life, you say. Exactly, and I'm absolutely delighted about that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, so we take the positives out of it. And, of course, you bring it to light in the public domain and everyone's like, oh, my word, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's walk off a duck's back to us, isn't it? We're just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just news to the world. But, as I say, yeah. we've, uh, we've been yeah. living with it for, for a long time. James, did you feel that Dad was putting you under pressure? You know, being a football legend himself. And were you, in a way, relieved when doctors were able to say, there's, there's a reason for this, Dad? No, not at all. Um, I mean, I think everyone wanted to be a footballer when they were younger, especially when you're not bad at it as well. Um, yeah, you, it you, would never you're talented. Pressure. Yeah, it would never pressure any, like me into it. It was definitely an inspiration, I would say. Mm -hmm. But... No, he's. I wouldn't say he's like that. He's very understanding. So, what, what kind of dad has he been? <laughs> be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <You're in striking laughs> range. The kind of dad who says, "Be careful when you get." <laughs> tell it, listen, yeah. listen. Ignore your dad. Ignore everybody else. Just tell us. Just, just tell us. What's he like as a dad? I mean, he is. He is a great dad. He definitely helped me through a lot of the hard times when it's obviously been um, going through. Like, obviously not understanding why I am this way, and it's just all of that type of stuff. It's been a massive. A massive help and it made me into the person I am today um, and I'm I'm a lot happier now I've it's as, as he said earlier it's just like water for ducks back it's um it doesn't really affect me now it's brilliant so it, it is it is yeah it's a really inspiring documentary you've made thank you um with all the individual stories of those on the team the partially sighted um men's team it's, it's fantastic football is for everyone premieres on TNT sports on January the 30th, and it's available um, on Discovery Plus. Thank you both so much. It's really good to have you in this morning. It's brilliant, well, really inspiring it. yeah. stuff. Yeah. Thank it's you. always good as a dad when your kids say good things, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's such no, a relief. He, he is. He did struggle at, at, at first, but he's turned into a cracker, and he'll be 18, as I say, in a couple of weeks. So. Oh, happy, happy yeah. birthday. What's going to be the celebration? Um, well, I don't really do big parties, but <laughs> I, I'm probably going to be with his, his friends. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, I'm, I'm more friends with adults nowadays, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, great stuff.